Good evening, dice roll fans. Welcome back to another D and D self isolation. Yeah, another one. Yeah, yes, another one. You sound so excited, Hongi. So sassy. <laughs> yeah. What's what's for the attitude? It's gonna be a good evening. I can tell. Nothing. Nothing is fine. Go on. Go on. <laughs> what you reckon you can do a better job? Yeah, he wanted to could, do last time, but it wasn't allowed. All right, fine. You reckon you can do a better job? You you DM this session. Yeah, I'm gonna fly the fucking thing. All right. Fine. Good oh. evening, oh. dice roll fans, and welcome back to Self Isolation, a Dungeons and Dragons Fifth Edition campaign set in the world of Eberron. My name is James Bulgarian Harper, and I will be your dungeon master for this evening. This is hey. actually happening. Is Joining this me tonight this is really some of our returning crew, really a regular adventure. We have Badger, and he will be playing... With himself. Uh, what? Uh, yeah, sorry, if you could just tell us who you're playing today. <laughs> it's your birthday, you play with yourself on camera all you want. I've had it. Uh, right. <laughs> I will be playing Mick Dagger, the uh, shifter rogue. Wonderful. And we have M, who will be playing... And uh, Nota Dwarf de Civis, uh, the uh, Warlock Gnome. Hey. Wonderful. Nailed and it. we we have Oakley, who will be playing... Callus Lanark, the Human Wizard. Fantastic. And that is our trio for today. Hyman, Mycure, and... Daisy? <laughs> <laughs> It's been so long. I know, it's played so infrequently. <laughs> it's been so long. Uh, are out of action for today. So, we find our heroes kicking back in one of the many booths at the Bountiful Vine, winding down after surviving yet another day in Shan's crime underworld. This is a few days after the events at the Cornstone Arena, where we, uh, we uh, had just pimped out a wagon to a magnificent, fabulous, and utterly tasteless standard of living. <laughs> ah, agree to disagree. Mm. Either way, we were attending the birth the birthday celebrations of a Lady Il Ilira Boromar, where yeah. an assassin assassination attempt was made on her life. Thankfully, the gang were able to thwart these attempts. She assassinated and, my heart. <laughs> and, no, <laughs> and Notad made a certain assassination <laughs> later on that night. And now he's trying to drown his sorrows in a gin glass the size of its own head. <laughs> that is a mighty gin glass. So I'll take you all back to the Bountiful Vine, sipping on your beverage of choices, relaxing, maxing, chillaxing, before a very ornate carriage rocks up to the bar. Was it pink? Did doves come out of it? Has it opened? Unfortunately not, but it was emblazoned with the Boromar sigil. Ooh. In places near, there, and everywhere. Out steps Castar, and Claude opens the door to reveal him, the uptight personal advisor to Dion and the Boromars, holding a letter addressed to the friends of D. And that letter for today reads for the audience. My dear friend, it is wonderful writing to you so soon after the, the events at Lady Illyria's birthday celebrations. I trust you are all well and will assume so. However, there's been a situation that I feel your expertise will excel in. It is quite the delicate matter, and so I must ask absolute discretion from you. Come find me at the Gilded Ambrosia, where we can discuss this further. Be nice to Castar. Kind regards, D. What are your uh, What are your thoughts, gang? You know, what are you gonna never do? come to the cheap pub, will he? Of course. You not. know I can never resist the D. So. <laughs> Oh, giving Fantastic. Most, <laughs> sorry, attempting to give it. <laughs> Wonderful. And how how will you be getting there? Uh, how far away is it? 
Uh, Gilded Ambrosia is up in the Skyway, so it's uh, it's quite a way up. Where were we last week? Were we up that way? I'm trying to remember mid, where the hell is. Mid-top sort of levels. It must have been relatively high, e high end. Yeah, the just, yeah, yeah, this, yeah. If you know Dion well, you know that this is uh, this he is definitely a few levels above the Bountiful Vine. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so he does socialise in the pauper bars like us. Yeah. I think it's probably a sky coach uh, journey, isn't it? I it's would, always I, I would, a sky coach journey. I would suggest a sky coach journey, yes. <laughs> Otherwise, it's going to be an entire session of us walking there. <laughs> it's uh, going to be two hours on foot and about six minutes by sky coach. Six minutes. Go. Yeah, let's do How it. How much money do I have before I start making these frivolous things? <laughs> oh, no, I've got money. That's okay. Probably mix I'll turn pay. into pay. Yeah, you ain't got none, though. No. <laughs> <laughs> so it's gonna be it's gonna be about four silver for the coach who's gonna uh he's gonna front yeah, oh, he's gonna perfect. front the reddies. <laughs> wonderful. Wonderful, wonderful. Palace Every is time we've gone to get on the sky way. coach, I just walk in, I don't ever... And so I've... without further ado, yeah, no. you follow the uh the sky coach. You follow the carriage that uh Castar takes. Because Castar will only ride alone. He won't ride with the likes of you. You're not important enough just yet. Oh, and you and you make your way to the gilded Ambrosia. Yeah. Now, before the carriage even stops, you're already aware of the bar's opulence. This isn't a place for anybody but the elite. This is no bountiful vine. You can see before you, a water feature outside falling in a spiral, marble walls shimmering with a hint of gold as the high sun bounces off the surface. Not a blemish in either roads, trails, or walls. The windows lay flush to the walls so as not to disturb the almost fluid appearance of the building. Do they open? They are not open. <laughs> it only becomes more so as they walk into the bar. As you guys walk into the bar, the warmth of colour and temperature not just embracing you, but offering you a drink. To drink and bask in the view of decadence unseen before in Shan. This is no bountiful vine. There are no stools, only chaise long. Across oh, low-reaching tables, carafes sailing about the, lo the lounging areas, magically pouring drinks to the select few who could afford to drink there, let alone make it past the security that have been waved away by Castar. You see Dion sitting alone, and he beckons you to him with a single nonchalant gesture. What can do you do? Can I go uh, lie down on a chaise long and shout across the room, hey Dion, paint me like one of your French girls. I think you would get a touch of derision from uh, the rest of the crowd if you really wish to do so. Do it. Yeah, let's do this. <laughs> Make a performance I'm check. Oh, no. <laughs> uh... Right, which whilst dice are we thinking she's, today? Whilst she's making a distraction, I sort of nudge Mick to see if he can steal anything. Sorry, if he can steal anything. Uh, four for my four. <laughs> so. What happens is you try you try to get yourself comfortable on the chaise long and you try and get into the position and as you do, you overbalance and you keel over and fall on the floor. <laughs> you realise before you shout out and really make a tit of yourself, and so you get back up and scurry back to the rest of the group. Wonderful. Worth it. Okay. Um you wanna try and steal things. Unfortunately the carafes always tend to drift out of reach. Because they they have much more important things to do than to be touched by the likes of humans. Peasants. So they just they just kind of Tokyo drift their way around you. I was just going to point out to Palace, it's probably not the best idea to try and steal from a a, a pub that's frequented by the Bar of Mars. <laughs> Let's go have a chat with Dion then. There is also that, yeah. As much as I'm up for stealing and robbing people, probably not the <laughs> no, best. No, our current going. employer drinks. We're all going to uh, have a little chat with Dion? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Wonderful. And so he sits you down and he says, Good friends, welcome, welcome. Have a seat. Have a lounge. 
I trust the journey was perfect. Complain. What was that? I said I can't complain. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I have summoned you here because I I need a particular piece of cargo from a night train running from the lightning rail to Rote. It appears the Dask have been attempting to smuggle all sorts of precious materials under our nose. I seem to recall uh, your group have thwarted one of those attempts before. And I've just grown rather tired of it all, if I'm being quite honest with you, dear friends. I want this cargo. I want it because the Dask want it. And I'm rather good at getting what I want, am I not? So I shall trust you to obtain this for me. Well, you are the D, I mean... <laughs> oh. And please and try and avoid drawing any attention to yourselves or your, and your activities. There will be many eyes on this. I feel like we often set out with that as an idea, but we're <laughs> rather flamboyant as a bunch. <laughs> Well, you guys are. I tried to hide. It just doesn't work. Thankfully, I have a contact that you shall be working with to assist you in this very important matter to me. You will meet them at the Lightning Rail Station once I've dismissed you here. To gain you a better understanding of your assignment, they're waiting quite patiently for you. And this, this cargo... Is it an S cargo? Tell us about it exactly. Oh god. <laughs> what was that? Sorry. <laughs> there was a, there was a, a dull noise in my ear. <laughs> what what can you tell us about this cargo? This what, cargo what is, is this? incredibly important to the Boromars. And in only the top members of the Boromar clan are aware of this cargo, and now yourselves. I need your absolute discretion on this matter. Discretion is fine. What What is it that we're getting ourselves into here? Is it dangerous? Is it... Your discretion living? isn't just among the Boromars, but why I want you to avoid garnering attention with your flamboyance, if you will. <laughs> But it is nothing but a simple lift from the train. A simple heist, if you will. I was going to use that word. I'm always up for a heist. Wonderful. Wonderful. And I trust your colleagues here, your your compadres, will be more than willing to, uh, to join in. Mm. So, hide the bodies. Got it. <laughs> There are no witnesses if there are no witnesses. <laughs> then I shall... The night train is at midnight. It is 12pm. You have plenty of time to plan and prepare. And I have prepared some sky, sky taxis to take you to the rail station directly. Do we need a pink Hummer? Sadly not. Okay. Good. We can't, we can't afford Remember one. that... that, that uh, <laughs> that thing I said about discretion? You're right, yes, of course. Yes, yes. So, are there any other questions? Um, what what are we expecting to come up against here? How well... Defended? You'll find out at the station. Do we need any security well. passes or codes to get on? Or get I, suppose you, I suppose you must find out at the station when you're with your contact. Wonderful. Nothing like being prepared. What's the contact's name? I've already forgotten what they said. Did you tell us? I don't think you did tell us. He did tell us. I have not. No, you didn't. We are listening. Yes. Shut off. And so, I am going to leave you plenty of time to prepare. So, off you go. You are now dismissed. And please, bums the word. But and so, Castar leads you to the prepared sky taxis, waiting outside the wonderful golden hue of the Gilded Ambrosia. And you step in. The sky taxi is free of charge this time. 
my treat, Dion's treat. And he takes you to the lightning rail station. And as you approach the station, you feel these very London Paddington-esque vibes at the lightning rail. The rose marble walls illuminated by the ever bright, these lanterns that just keep everything illuminated. Yet there are still plenty of shadows lurking among the station. And while you're waiting for the contact to show themselves, as you're trying to look as inconspicuous as can be, no doubt, knowing your group. <laughs> I, least we, I mean, at least we don't have a uh, what's his face, a massive God, robot with us. If our time. contact yeah. is Captain Albatross Mackerel, <laughs> one of the sh one of the <laughs> shadows be actually, out with Dr. Bees. <laughs> one of the shadows actually speaks out to you. Ah. You must be the friends of D, uh, no? Uh, oh, no! <laughs> no, he's crossed planes! <laughs> and out steps a lithe, willowy figure of a man. Hooked nose, a trim, dark hair and beard. Clothed in what could only be described as the color of shadow. My friends, my beautiful, beautiful friends. I am Aurelien de Noir. <laughs> Chief and Hog International. Oh. And who may you be? I feel like I know you. <laughs> I'm sure I see. Your voice like... is familiar. <laughs> yeah, it is. Uh, that's strange. I get that a lot. I get that so often. <laughs> Uh, I'm Notad. A pleasure to meet you, Notad. This is uh, Callus here. And uh, then we've got Mick. Ah, wonderful. A an Arc de Triumph. Oh. <laughs> We're just going to throw in a bit of French there. Are sure he's not Del Boy Trotter? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, <laughs> Alors, we must uh, investigate the train, no? Yes, we two, must uh, two, yeah. find the carriage avec the cargo, and we must, uh, how you say, stop the train. As opposed to you, what do you say? If that's what we're saying, what are you saying? Oh, C'est la guerre. <laughs> <laughs> nice. I love this. I love this so much. And so, with the help of William de Noir, of no relation to... <laughs> to Notorious no, Thief and no Bastard. Yeah, of no relation to the Notorious <laughs> Thief and Bastard, <laughs> Levi de Noir. Uh, you must find the carriage that will contain the cargo and decide how you will board the train. You must board this train at midnight. That is What's where the cargo is going to be. It's at 12 p.m. now, so you have time. But 12 hours. Did, yeah, it didn't you have 12 hours to uh, do some reconnaissance, if you will, to plan what you're going to do. Is the train in the station? Not yet. More what importantly, time? the cargo isn't there yet. Okay. I feel like my so, S-cargo joke is just getting more, like, solid. More pronounced as it goes yeah. up. <laughs> Well, you know, it slowly creeps up on you, doesn't it, Escargo? So. Oh. <laughs> Can you get yourself inspiration? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> the DM can't claim inspiration for themselves. <laughs> so you may not have the same train, but they they all share the same structure because the uh, the train to Rote from Shan is is kind of like one that goes so, every hour. Did you say we've got to board this train at midnight? Yes, you are boarding the midnight train and taking the cargo off of Don't the train. Don't do it. <laughs> I, I, can see, I can see you going for it, Em. I can see you. <laughs> Where's this midnight train going to? Rote. Is it, is it Georgia? It is not going down to Georgia, no. Oh, okay. It's also not going anywhere. <sighs> what, because we're not going to allow it to? Exactly. Ah, are we we? Ah ha ha ha, we we. 
okay. Wee wee poo poo. What, how big is this cargo? Do we know that yet? He wouldn't tell us anything. I was trying to get us get it out of Dion. Yeah, does William know? Uh, unfortunately, I, I do not know the cargo. I, so I how are we meant to get this cargo if no one knows <laughs> what <laughs> it is? How, how are we meant to find it? Yeah. It is uh, one of the only cargo on the train. The Dusk have booked all of the... So, this What's is going to be well defended, going to be like isn't on it? the train, yeah. Have you, do, do you know? There is some, uh, how you say, uh, branding on the crate. Branding. Right. Like a logo of this. The dusk. Oh, there's, there's some brandy on the crate. <laughs> we'll drink that when we get there. Um. Okay. Well... I don't know how much reconnaissance okay. is actually like going to be worthwhile. Um, we should probably see if there's any like security hatches or whatnot in the train. We could enter what? that way. Instead like of a, like an air duct. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, or maybe a hatch at the uh, back or underneath. <laughs> okay. He said yeah. all the trains are very similar, as in the the, the trains that are going to be coming through the station today are very mm -hmm. similar to this train. Yes, well. they'll have a they'll have a similar structure. Oh, so we could look at the very least. We could have a look at a couple of trains that come through. Yeah, to or see we the could look very closely at what the conductor's wearing, and then take that Ooh. Ooh. and enter the train anyway. We wouldn't get three conductors know? though, but do we? You know? might have a driver and a conductor and a security guard, maybe. What do these trains run on? Is it coal? It's on the electric. It's on the lightning rail. Okay, so yeah. Yeah, but you would you would have security like guards if it's gone. a heavily guarded train, and surely if all the guards look the same. <laughs> I, I, I like the, the idea of the the guards. Yeah. Because we know there's gonna well, I'm gonna assume there's gonna be a few of these because if this is the only cargo. Well, well there are guards. There are guards attending on the station itself. And you okay. see two guards about the cargo and about the train. Uh, one one holding a, a war hammer and the other one holding bearing a short sword. And they, they kind of look like your typical kind of guards. So they don't look like too much of a problem. But they are patrolling the train. The what tra race so are the they? Current train, the, tr the current train and the cargo. What uh, race? Human. Human, okay. Mick, you're human, aren't you? They, they, look almost, they look almost mercenary. I feel like yes. a gnome sort of stick out of it. If they are mercenaries, mercenaries can be bought. Yes, but Ooh. a gnome could maybe, a gnome could potentially be uh, an engineer on the train. Into small, I could just be in the background getting into smaller spaces, like if they were air ducts and stuff. I'm not too certain if there would be. Uh, would there be an engineer on there an, might a train a that's problem. run by elemental lighting? Lightning, there, sorry. There might be if there's a, a a problem on the track. Hmm. Like I don't know, maybe some sort of accidental human corpse. <laughs> <laughs> That looks a lot like Callus. That looks quite like a guard <laughs> that used to maybe not have it, but he hasn't got a guard's uniform on anymore. I thought we had a hobgoblin in our party we could throw on the rails. <laughs> no, I've so so I've, uh, I've just, I've just, Her. yep. Okay, I've just got word that there would be some sort of magic in engineer and they would be present along <laughs> with the driver. Okay. So, do we, do we think we should try and, um, Surprise these guards. Yeah. Disguise. Nick the shit and hide the bodies, and then we need to try and then get you an engineer's costume. Or perhaps, uh, have you ever thought of uh, boarding as passengers? I could go. As then a we can wander whenever. Yeah. We... But we can wander wherever we like as guards. Or. Well, I think some of us could go as guards, uh, and maybe I'll go as a passenger. I think if one of us goes as a. A passenger, one as a guard. 
we could potentially have the whole this one's making trouble we're going to just keep them chained up somewhere yeah, for the journey. people people don't wait, need to wait, know wait, us that wait, we're a group right, yeah is there anywhere anywhere on this platform we could find say a guard's uniform rather than drawing attention by killing someone is there a um guards hangout oh, area but like a like a like a changing room yeah. yes staff only areas there would be there would be staff only areas but of course they would be behind lock and key we could follow we have, i think we in. have a guy for that <laughs> do you oh Go what ahead. a crazy random happenstance can can we see uh where this kind of place would be because i have something that i might be able to steal and stuff with um, or assist stealing with. Also, to the other guys, I'm assuming we don't want to stop this train, so we've got to try and prevent anybody from causing any emergency that will involve us stopping until we want it to be stopped. Or potentially, we need to get off do it we, do we whilst even want... it's moving. Do we like when we're gonna we're gonna want to board this train, grab the cargo, and get off really before it leaves, don't we? Yeah. How long do they sit in the station to... for? It moves it... right on twelve. What yeah, time, what time, does, time it does it arrive? In the station. This is gonna be like the fucking Ooh. Shinkansen in Japan, isn't it? It's like yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's very <laughs> regular. It's loop. almost fluid. So you would have about four minutes. Okay, so we haven't got enough time. Well. We, did, the problem is like we don't know what time, this is, because if it's like this big, I glit one of us could run on, grab it. The other two. But we don't even know what. We don't know what carriage it's going to be in, and we don't know. It could be the whole car. Ah, uh, my friends, my friends. The answer to where the cargo is is simple. Get the cargo so then. We, oui, c'est ça. <laughs> but. Which carriage has is the cargo bay? I'm going to say it's whichever one's the heaviest guarded. At the back, normally, I think. Yeah. Hmm. Not bad. But you look. The, does the entire train fit into the station? Like it's not yes, like the, the entire train. the entire platform goes across. The entire, so could get the in entire on train. Any car, you theory. can get in on any car in theory. I feel like I'm having like awful flashbacks to like times when I used to get trains. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you try to get off and your car's not on the, the station. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The okay. next station only has carriages two, three, and four. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So do we, if this layout of the current train is very similar to the midnight train, we could potentially work out roughly where the carriage is going to be. Mm -hmm. Care to make an investigation it, check for me? Oh, crap. Let's have a wander through a train as a first point of call, I think. Oh, natural 20 for... Nat 20. 26. <laughs> Wonderful. So you see all of the carriages lined across the platform okay. and they are almost uniform all of their windows evenly spaced each carriage the same size except for one carriage the third carriage from the train itself the one carriage that has no windows mm, that makes sense any because there are no need mm-hmm thanks Exact of all, my friend! <laughs> Stop encouraging <laughs> I love it. Hello, we have found Chicago, no? Or are where Chicago is gonna be? Is there any doors okay. on this carriage? Is it, I guess it's just one door in. Uh, it one, is. At either, one either end, maybe? One either yeah. end, yes. There are no side doors to the cargo bay. Then how the hell do they load the cargo? very carefully <laughs> magic i would imagine they have a flap so like you know like a hinged gate as opposed oh, to an actual yeah. door so that won't be open on time of boarding 
not particularly oh, yeah. inconspicuous either, opening that up. No. But getting out, however... Are there any hatches or air vents on the top? That's one. Is that... there's one? Is that there's one. a hatch or an air yeah. vent? There is one on hatch. Top. There's a hatch on top of the cargo bay. How, how big we talking here? It wouldn't be massive because they don't need to load from the top. They're loading in from the side, right? Would it be Bit big better. enough for a human slash gnome? gnome? You have to think... So when would you be trying to sneak on top? Because you've got to think that the lightning rail is going to be moving at well, quite a pace. Yeah, and it's going to be sat in this station as well. At the only point where we can probably well, use that and it's not very oh, conspicuous either. I was more thinking whilst we're on it, whilst it's moving, it could go up and down. Oh, God. If we've it's got to be one, moving very fast. If we've got one door at either end, they are de surely definitely guarded. So either we take out the guards, pose as the guards and walk in and hope for the best. Is it a carriage in the middle or is it a carriage at the end? Or the... It is a carriage. So thanks to Oak Palace's... Uh, percep investigation. It is the third carriage from the train. So you've got the train, you got a carriage, and then you've got the cargo bay. So it's actually quite near the front. And then there's more carriages after it. There's more carriages after it. So is um that carriage in between yeah, the, the engine one and the cargo? Is that like a crew carriage or is it like first? I class would say or? that is a crew carriage. Yes. Oh. So there's no real reason for anyone that's not staff to be anywhere above <laughs> carriage three. Yeah. And mm -hmm. after that carriage, are we talking just passenger carriages and other shit? Passenger carriages, like Buffet so car. after, so you've got yeah, so you would have you would have first class uh dining um like kitchen, then first yeah. class, and then it, it kinda goes down like in a, in an anti snow piercer kind of way. <laughs> Okay. So it's quite, it's very tiered, very hierarchical. Okay. Are so, any of the staff women? Because I could, could seduce them <laughs> in the buffet car. I'm sure, I'm, I'm sure, sure there are. Are there any sleeper carriages? They they have their own crew quarters. That's what oh. that first, that for carriage is. So, my, my thinking is one of us poses as a passenger or somebody that would be in the fourth car. Potentially two. Guards. I think, yeah, I think that's probably more likely. Um, One person can lure them away whilst the others go in from the other door. Well, have I seen Unless these guards wandering about? In. What if I find you have, you have seen these guards wandering about? Could the I ones fashion the... myself a guard uniform out of my disguise kit? What race are you, Mick? I forget. I'm a shifter. Shifter, so yeah. What if I make if I'm a passenger, I could make a commotion in the passenger car and then you two go in from some other this position. Could work, I would look like a guard. Just yeah, and Mick can probably make all... himself to look relatively guard like. No, no but I, 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 I am much like... too handsome to be a guard. Oh yeah, forget. <laughs> Forgot you were here for a second, William. Not Levi. <laughs> um... <laughs> You could be Notad's, uh, you know. Date. Date. Ah, I could be his. I could be his companion, no? Mm. No, we could be. Um, we don't know each other, and we're the. We cause the commotion by having a fight, like as if we don't know each other. But like, like I, you, I trip you up or something. <laughs> yeah. You are devious, my friend. <laughs> So, like, you you walk past me and I'll trip you up and then we'll cause a fight or something like so that. So, can I use my disguise kit to try and make some uh, uh, uniforms, or would we have to steal these? Make well, me a deception check. Where's all my spells? Oh, where's my deception? Uh, that's a 22. 22? Mm -hmm. Damn, man. I think you can craft a pretty decent guard uniform out of that. Mm -hmm. I would say it would be fairly convincing. Would you make it fashioned to the same style as uh, the guards you've just seen? The human guards with the, the war hammer and the short sword? 
makes sense, doesn't it? Do we Sorry. know what the um, image of the what was it the what was the people that were stealing this from? Do we know what they would be wearing? Could one of their guards be a good shout? Do we know if the Dask have their own guards or if they've just paid for the train guards? The train, like, uh, it'd be like uh, furs and uh, leathers. It would be like furs and leathers, a rough kit. But I think, yeah, it would look very out of place in a civilized area such as the Lightning Rail Station. Okay. So, so they're I'm guessing we go with the Lightning Station type guards. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So you're fashioning one or two of these things. Uh, well, two if I can. Yeah. Hmm. Y your character badger. Yes. In when he's not shifted, does he look human? I I've completely forgotten how shifters work. Shift is relatively feline. feline. Yeah. No. Do they have like feline feet? Not like he full like Khajiit features, <laughs> but so he looks. Very much humanoid, but he's got kind of olivey coloured skin that, if you look very closely, looks sort of fur like, mm. like very fine. And then he has okay. uh, sort of cat ish looking eyes. Mm -hmm. So, with, apart from the eyes, you look fairly human. Yeah, so okay. I'm, fine, I'm fine with you making the disguises, but it will take, take you up to the time of action. Okay, I think we're so that'll be... that's, I think that's fine. Okay. I feel like we're pretty much there yeah, with our yeah. plan. Okay, yeah. so we need to buy tickets, don't we, to this? We'll find out how much tickets. Well, are only me and Lee. Uh, not Levi, yes. sorry. Me and William need them. Yes, William. Rick Levi is, is my Levi. cousin. He is a oh. uh, relative. Did you know he's a notorious bastard? Uh, all Thief of us and know bastards. our bastards. <laughs> <laughs> I have not seen a, a, a Levi in oh, over 10 years now. <laughs> so. We have some friends who know him. So, do we have a plan? I think we do. Yeah. Um, William, and no William and Notad are going going in as passengers and are going to cause a little ruckus at the at the in the passenger side. Mm -hmm. And it's going to lure the actual guards down. And we yeah. have Callus and Mick posing as posing as guards. And they're, they're going to hang back, and you're all going to meet at the cargo bay. Yeah. I mean, at the cargo carriage. And yeah, make we're, we're going to break your we're way gonna, in. We're going to walk down, potentially assist the guards, and say, right, we'll take them up to and lock them up, and then just take them up to the cargo bit. Or, well, maybe you get the real guards to lock us up, or one on there, not yeah, lock yeah, us up. Yeah. So that's probably yeah, not a good idea. To, but... to move them away, and then we take their place. Or, I guess because I guess we, you can get on the train in the crew area because you could just walk on there. No one will. Yeah, I was debating whether or not we get on. I would say I would the say crew. the I would say the the guards stay uh, among the passengers because the crew the crew that's literally for like the waiting staff and the the engineers and ah, stuff. Okay, okay. The guards because the guards would tend to board the train among the passengers so they can, you know, intimidate them. Okay, to... so we'll all all four of us then will be in carriage four. 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 Yeah. Um. Okay, waiting for waiting for an opportune moment. Yeah. I think William will give the signal when it, the train's gone out far enough to execute this plan. Yeah. Because you need to you need to stop the train to get the cargo out in between Shan and Rote. Yeah. Okay. 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 Do, you... Do we know anyone that we could get as a getaway driver? To like, if we stop the train at a specific point and they're there ready to take. Don't us away? worry, my friends. The noir has a plan. Good. Okay. Are we planning on stopping the train? Because these things are fast, aren't they? These are like bullet train speed. So right? fast. Leave that with me. I shall, I think that's I shall the stop way. the train with easily. The only easily. other way is we detach the train from the rest, but I feel like we would stay with a lot of people. Yeah. It's not very conspicuous that either. It is not. But Nora is stopping it. True. Is there any way oh. that we can get off whilst it's still moving? What if, when we have this altercation, I start having a heart attack? Oh, no. Quotation marks. And we have to stop the train for me to go into an ambulance or something. Ah, and I shall tell the yeah. driver to stop. 
Yeah. I am very fast with these long dancer's legs of mine. <laughs> what, you're a frog? Oh, oh my god. Ah <laughs> I, made, I made my own joke. <laughs> Didn't even mean to. I <laughs> Didn't even mean it. So. So, Eight William's going to stop the train after Notad fakes a heart attack. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. Oh, no. That's so many layers. I think, we've got, I think, we've, got a, so I think we've got a plan here, gnomes, ladies and gentlemen. And so, taking doing the disguise kits is going to take you up to uh, the time. So, you, you go back. Mick gets his stitches on. <laughs> Gets his sewing kit out and starts crafting these uh, these guards uniforms, and they look they look fantastic. They look great, and they fit rather snugly, I dare say. Mm. But room to grow. And so it comes to night time. You return to the station, and you're all picking you're all picking the fourth carriage, the one carriage before the, the carriage, yes, mm -hmm. before the cargo bay. Wonderful. Just as it's approaching the time, I'd like to cast Mage Armor on myself. Okay. Uh, can, you, can you tell? Can you tell the audience what that does, Mage Armor? Um, it will give me AC thirteen plus my Dex, so oh, it gives nice. me fifteen armor. Fifteen so, AC. Well, on top of your current armor class. No, it replaces oh, my right. current armor. And what Have does it look made. like? This what does it look like? This mage armor is it? Inc is it like invisible or it's, it's is it... invisible? Yeah. Oh, okay. So I I just literally just touch it to my robes or whatever it is that Mick has fashioned for me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm assuming there's no actual armor. It's just the like best mini skirt you've ever seen. Stuff. So you're now. It is what? your birthday. So your AC is now what, sir? Fifteen. Fifteen. Cool. Thank Which you. I need to put on. And that lasts eight, eight hours. Eight hours, yeah. I was going to do it just as it gets close to the time when it's arriving, so I'll have it for the longest yeah, time. Yeah, that's, that's absolutely fine. And so you board the train without making much of a fuss. You know, the passengers have tickets. And the guards... Nobody seems to notice. Nobody seems to notice the, the guards uh, really standing out. The, the kit, the deceptive uniforms have done their job, and you you kind of board the train without any fuss. And so, the passengers sit, William and Notad kind of sit opposite each other, you know, glancing around, shifty, furtive glances. And the guards stand, looking, pretending to be guards. Can I get a performance check from uh, oh, both shit. the guards, please? I got a 17. So, so, the, so we have a, a one. So for a Mick, total of Mick kind of impose, Mick kind of imposes this in intimidating thing. He is a guard not time. to be messed with, and the passengers know this. They keep giving shifty, furtive glances at Mick to make sure that what they're doing is correct. You know the whole. Am I okay? Just sat here. Am I okay? <laughs> so Mick is ruling over them with an iron fist. Callus, on the other hand, <laughs> everyone knows he's just in it for the minimum wage, easy perks, you know, <laughs> coasting. So there's a there's a small there's a small small child on the train, and he keeps pulling faces at Callus while he's uh, when he's not looking. I'm just going with. I like how I'm ruling with an iron fist, and I'm only like five foot six or something. <laughs> Fake it till you make it. Well, I am five foot six. I'll have you know in real exactly. life. Exactly. <laughs> okay. So you you sit and wait, or you stand and wait for William's signal, and all, all of a sudden you just see the the quick nod of William saying. It's time to act. Got there. Wine. It's an out-of-date fruit drink. <laughs> so wine. 
So who's going to start this fight? Is it no tap? Um. Hmm, hmm, hmm. You gotta say I something th really dodgy in French, now, don't you? Oh God, I. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> hey, who are you looking at? You know me, prick. <laughs> are you talking to me? Uh, who else am I talking to? Look at you. What? What? <laughs> you fucking How, what? How dare you? C'est moi que tu parles? C'est moi que tu parles? Oh, I speak English. Pas de ici? Speak English, son. This is God's country. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You cannot understand basic language. Well, apology accepted, but you're still a prick. I don't like you. <laughs> you are half the person I am today. And without further ado, whoa, you, see, whoa, whoa. you see the two guards running down the carriage past past Callus and Notad, the ones wearing the Warhammer and the short sword. I'm like, all right, all right, break it up. Lee, you deal with the one. I've got the other one. Oh, right you are, Bruce. You deal with him. I'll this deal with the gnome. This guy just made a short joke of me, now, and this is calm racist, down. and I will Calm not down, me. mate. Calm down. You're ruining everyone else's environment with, <laughs> with your expression, with your aggression. You don't need it. Can I punch the guard? Would that, would that be inconspicuous? <laughs> oh, yeah, good point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry. <laughs> so, we just calm down. And just, just take a walk. Take a walk, mate. I reckon you should hit William for what uh, his cousin did. It's a, yeah, it's a good point. It's a good point. Yeah, I'm going to hit William. Is that not a bit of metagaming? Because this guy's <laughs> not related. Huh? And you don't know what happened. Do I have to sound the alarm? Do I have to sound the alarm? I will. Sound the alarm. I'm gonna, no, I'm not going to hit him. I'm going to slap him. I want to slap William. Dodge! Okay, make an unarmed strike. Alright. He dies instantly. Oh no, that'd be powerful to carry. It was actually a frog in disguise. Uh, 12. This is, I'm afraid. But he, t he sees the swipe. He sees the swipe and he, he makes a bit more of a fuss and and Bruce is like, all right, all right, just settle, just settle. And then another kerfuffle happens in another carriage. <gasps> and Bruce Bruce and Lee go, oh, Christ, it's really not my day. <laughs> and they just run and they run through the carriage completely the opposite direction to where you guys are going. Lovely. That worked like a charm. Okay, let's go. So Ooh, you guys are... Nudge, nudge, Mick. We're, we're, we're That's just... it. Nudge, Mick. And I'll just go, you two, follow me. Right, come this way. So, so Bruce and no. Lee... Bruce and Lee have left you... You, uh... You four. Bruce Lee. And, uh... You come up to... You come up to the, uh... You come up to the cargo bay. Who's going to open it? I'll do it. One of the guards. Yeah, I'll, I'll go for it. Or try. Okay. Is it open? Or is it locked? I'm going to not use this dice again. <clears throat> try, yeah, are you going to try the handle? Yeah. Yes? I'm assuming it's not going to be trapped. It's a train. Oh, yeah. Sure. sure. I'll try the handle. The door swings open. <laughs> Wait. The cargo carriage is largely empty. Except for at the back, where there are a few select boxes each bearing the dask symbol there is a big one at the front of those the one that looks like it has to be the predestined cargo this like the ark of the covenant like mm -hmm, the yeah <laughs> however the cargo is not alone in the carriage of course it is not no there are two guards in the carriage. Their their faces completely hidden by their armor. There's no telling where their eyes are looking at. Only what directions their body are facing. Are they similar looking though to the same 
like the clothes. No, no, these no. are completely different. These are all coated in armor. One red, one white. The carvings and engravings are plain, mere trim. But their weapons on their back mean business. A scimitar on one, two short swords on the other. Oh, we were warned about these guys. I can't remember what was said, they but I remember They those. patrol kind of haphazardly among the cargo. They take a few steps around, almost like they're sniffing out something, sense, trying to sense something mm -hmm. otherworldly. And then they sit back down. They kneel back down. The other one then gets up, takes a few steps in a different location, kind of peers, and kneels back down. And they keep doing this around the cargo. And it's a very asymmetric patrol. A rat makes a small, almost regretful squeak before attempting to pass one of the guards. At which, at which point the guard springs into a dash and snatches the rat against the wall in one swift movement. And promptly bites the rat in half. Swallowing it whole. The Can other guard. See what this is? You see what these gu you see the guards and you see what they're doing, but you can't make head nor tail of what they are. Okay. The other guard walks up to him, taking the other half out of his hand freely, swallowing, gulps it down, and you can hear those gulps even <laughs> from the distance that you stand. Mm -hmm. Oh. <laughs> And then they resume their infrequent random patrol about the cargo again. Did they William William peeks it? in behind you guys and says, Ah, I see. I shall leave them to you and move to no. stuff such a What chance? Oh, and he just he kinda he kinda leaps up and he, he's gone. Before you can even think about it, he's gone. Do we carry on with the ruse? Like, do you guys lead this and pretend that have, I'm a... Have these things, these guards, seen us? I'm assuming there's nothing between us and them. You haven't alerted there's them just yet. Okay. I, I'm going to try and gesture everybody else in that isn't William, because he's buggered off now. And <laughs> he is gone. The like the wind, he's, he's, he's delved into the shadows. He's what are we thinking? Are we going to have to incapacitate bastard. We're going to have to incapacitate them. I feel like that's probably Look, what we're going to have to do. Looking at the speed of how quickly they dealt with the rat, I think mm. I'm going to have to either dispose of them or we're going to have to find someone who can sneak around very quickly. How big is this cargo? The, Sorry, you may have just said it. The cargo is it's about it's about a six foot box. So six, oh, six, like, like, like a six, six foot square. Yeah, like a six foot square. Okay, so it's big. Um, yeah. Okay, we ain't gonna be able to sneak job. It, No. We're, we're just to, to just to clarify, you guys are in the carriage, but you haven't alerted them yet. The carriage is quite long. Okay. I was thinking okay. I could misty step it, over there, but lot. I won't be able to. No, you wouldn't be able to get it out. We're okay. gonna have to incapacitate them because once Levi, not Levi, famously not Levi, um, stops the train. <laughs> Um, we just need to get it out of this carriage. We don't really need to go anywhere. We just need to get rid of them. Yeah. And then wait for the train to stop. Because we don't even we... need to do the... We can the... only see two of these guys, right? There's nothing else in here. There are only the two guards and the cargo. What's our plan of attack, then? Because, we, yeah, we're going to have to dispose of these guys. Assuming they are hostile, they look like they look like they're guarding this thing, don't they? Like you said, they're kind of sniffing at something near it. Throw, give me a perception check. Ah, shit, yes. Ooh, hang on, my thing just disappeared. Uh, uh, thirteen. Thirteen. So. You can tell that there's there's definitely a mystical aura about them. And you can see their weapons quite clearly. 
It's going to be like enchanted armor or something, isn't it? So I was thinking if it would, if it was, yeah, what kind of armor they had, if it would maybe um, some sort of like electricity type thing might be a good idea, but. <laughs> Can we make out anything more on them? They, they aren't going to disturb their, they aren't going to let their patrol be disturbed unless you disturb them. Which means if you cross their path, like the rat, you will be got, as it were. Could poison spray one of them. Yeah. I think we're just have to, gonna have to go for it. We need the element of surprise on them because they are fast. Yeah. Um. Do we think sneaking is an option, Nick? I'm looking in your direction. We might be able to sneak there, but what do we do once we've got there? I was going to say, I can attack them, but I don't know if it'll do anything. I don't see any other them. option. No, we're going to have to take them out, aren't we? Because we can't sneak the thing out. The thing is too... We can't get to it out, no. How far away are they from us? They're, they're, a, they're a fair amount of distance, I would say, about... 20 feet it's a lot it's a lot to jump at basically but i could give you an opportunity attack on the Do first we have part. a rough idea of how long it's going to be till the train stops uh a good question william's going to try and stop it as soon as he can he's making his he's crawling his way up above the carriages now but of course it's moving very fast so he's having to be very careful okay is he's just going to stop it, isn't he? Yeah. Yes. And he's not waiting for us. No, no, no. So time is of the essence. I would say. Okay. Mick, I would say Mick might be your best chance to start an opportunity attack. I was going to say, can I sneak up so I'm within sort of striking distance before the other make, two? Make me a stealth check. I was going to ask if I can misty step behind one of them and use, then use Shock and Grasp. Before you go, I would like to use Spellsmith to give you magical weapon on whichever weapon you desire, Mick. It will give you so, plus one to the attack and damage rolls. So, do my daggers I'll be uh, using. One of the daggers, then. Okay, so what I've got here is I've got... I've got... Mick sneaking up and then going to surprise attack so striking from stealth and you get multiple mm -hmm. bonuses on that i've got yeah. spellsmith being cast by callus which will buff badges attacks further i'm assuming yes just, just give me a plus one on my dagger yes. okay cool and and counts as magic and no tad is going to can you misty step and then or would you have to or is misty step in action Can you do those together, or like as one as a bonus action, or are they both actions? I can, yeah, no, I can misty step as a bonus action. Sorry. Yeah. So, who do you want to go first? Because obviously, once you've alerted these guards, we're gonna, I was hoping we're for some. Sorry. Some sort of unity, unity. What's the word I'm looking for? Yeah, like at the same time, simultaneously. <laughs> a synchro attack. Uh, yeah, I I'm feel gonna like... wait for the other two to attack. I'm gonna stay at range because the, I, the element of surprise I feel is our biggest yeah. ally okay. at the moment. Cool. Yeah. So, uh, Mick, have you made a stealth check for me? Yes, I got eighteen. Wonderful. Okay, you. Yeah, you sneak up without uh, without alerting the guards, and you actually reach striking distance. Mm -hmm. So you want to time this perfectly, right? Oh, I can see no tad's rolls. Oh. So which one's closer to me? Is it going to be the white or the red? Uh, the red one is closest to you. The red 
Red has a scimitar. So am I waiting for a signal or am I just bouncing oh, to attack? Good girl. <laughs> <laughs> I'm waiting well, for you to attack. In that case. Let's do it. Imagine these things are happening at the same time. Okay. Can you make an attack roll for me, please? Mick? I can. Right, let's have a look at uh, dagger. I'll get a plus... <clears throat> Is it a plus four plus your plus one then, hopefully? Yes. It just adds plus one to the attack roll and plus one to the damage of whatever it is. So that that's... Brilliant. For the next hour. So, I keep getting 18 to hit. Wonderful, that hits. Roll for damage. Which I will be using um, sneak attack. Nice. Get that bucket of d6 out. And uh, is this a surprise round, I take it? Yes, surprise round. All ah, right, so it's instantly a crit because it's assassinate. Wow. Oh. oh, this will be the first time you've oh got to use this. Oh my god, it's okay, let's go. Finish yeah. him. <laughs> Give me, so, give me the damage. Next, uh, that's... Oh. Get the calculator out. <laughs> so, right, one sec. Right, okay. Oh, there. Uh, yeah, where's my defaults? Oops. Yeah. Underfloor. That'll be 16 damage in total. Wonderful. With okay. The first hit. With the first hit. Yeah. You get to hit again. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Go for it. Uh, two weapon fighting, lovely, isn't it? <laughs> and then the second dagger obviously doesn't get all the buffs, no. so we'll see what it is. Okay. Hits. Um, oh, it's only 11 to hit on the second. Okay. That misses, I'm afraid. Yeah. And I'm mm -hmm. going to have to ask you. Yeah. To roll for initiative. Yay. Come on. I had to do my misty step and um, shocking grasp as a like pre-initiative thing. Uh, it's twenty on my initiative. I really need to pee. Okay. Uh. Okay, so what we'll do is we'll roll for initiative, and then we'll have you as a surprise attack. So you, okay. so you get to attack first, and then we'll have you roll, go into the initiative. Okay. Sound good? Yeah. Sounds fair. Cool. Right. Uh, so I got twenty for Mick. Callus, what you get? Eighteen. Eighteen. Not bad. Noted. Nineteen. Nineteen. Bloody hell! Wow. Right. I got a decent roll. I'm still. <laughs> I should, I should really roll for these guys. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> it's just the same. Am I being dumb? Never roll for someone that isn't me. <laughs> <clears throat> oh, wait. Okay. I, I forgot to say, Hunk, I don't know if it makes any difference, but um, six of that damage from my attack would have been poison. Oh, okay, cool. Because these being armor, I don't know if that will negate. Oh, bones, yeah. It depends if they're magical. I oh, no, no, yeah, is it? it no, one sec, sorry, I'm trying to read it. Okay. No, it just says damage. I thought it was poison. It's not, it's just damage. Right? Okay, cool. Okay, so, M, we'll start with you, with the surprise attack. So the other one to what um, Mix just attacked. So you, you're going to hit the white, okay? Yeah, um, Misty step behind them, and okay. then shocking grasp. Okay, and what do I need for that one, please? Um, it's just like a normal attack one, actually. Really, to be fair. So even though it's touch, I still have to roll to hit. Uh, okay, so then... you you need to make an attack roll. I don't need to make a saving. No, throw it's not a saving okay. throw on this one. Um. Wonderful! I get, tell, the uh, audience, wait, tell the audience what Shock and Grasp does for me. So, lightning springs from my hands to deliver a shock to a creature of you that you try to touch. Uh, make a melee spell attack against the target. Um, I get advantage if they are wearing an armor made of metal. Okay, so you get nice. advantage on this. Cool, okay. Um, 
And then if I hit, they take 1d8 of lightning damage. Wonderful. Okay. Oh, and it can't take reactions until the start of its next turn. Ah, okay. I swear so... used to use that and he never mentioned no, it. No, I don't. I, I was reading it going, that's not what I remember it doing. <laughs> I don't remember it doing anything. Classic. Oh. <laughs> okay. Oh. okay, roll attack roll, please. Uh, attack 17. That hits. Roll for some damage, please. What do I need? 1d8. Oh, some... yeah, you get advantage anyways due to surprise, but you can only attack once at this rate. That's... Yeah, that's only... Yeah, once, okay. Yeah. yeah, you've hit it. Sound. Um, thank God I had advantage because my first roll was a 5. <laughs> oh, there we go. Got one uh, d8. That one. That's like the tabletop-y kind of one. Okay. Oh, great. Uh, I got a 1. A one, so you deal a whopping one damage. But what a one damage what it, a is. One it is! The cargo carriage, the cargo carriage flashes with a crackle of lightning as you strike, strike the uh, strike the white armor armored guard square in the chest, just square in the back. Sorry, I do apologize. Square in the back, and he's taken quite a back. But now it seems that you've angered yeah. it. Okay, so we go into Mick. What's your next attack? Uh, uh, Kalis, you're on deck. I've always wanted to say that. <laughs> um, so I'll be. Da, 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 da. Is that so? Is that one turn over? I take it. Uh, no, M, M had a surprise attack, so now we're going in the order of initiative. So, so you had twenty. You were the top. I tell you, yeah. That, I mean, a turn hasn't gone round yet. Then. No, a no. turn hasn't gone round yet. No. <laughs> All right. In that case, I shall just uh, take another stab with the daggers. At who? <laughs> the red one in front. Okay. Of me. Cool. Ro attack roll, please. Uh, the first one is 16 to hit. That hits. Roll for some damage. And the damage is... 6. 6. Alright. So you take... Would you say you stab the red guard with the dagger? Yes. Okay, you stab and you find a critical point in its armor. This thing is wheezing, it's coughing. You can't see its face, but you do see a spatter of blood come up as it starts coughing up. It's in a very bad way. Great, I'll bring in my second dagger then. <laughs> Wonderful. Okay, roll for attack roll, please. That's a 15. That hits, roll for some damage. I did better the second time. <laughs> um. Oh, actually, that's... Uh, what's... Five damage. Five damage. Okay. How would you want to kill Ooh. the red guard? Oof. I just take my second dagger and bring it in between the armor and his helmet on his neck. Perfectly. So, you saw a spatter of blood the first time. The second time, it's a fountain. It is pouring out of the armor. And the you can't honestly tell where the armor begins and the blood ends. It's uh, it is a feedback loop of absolute annihilation of this poor guard, and he just slumps to the floor before Mick, vanquished. Any other any other actions on your turn? There is nothing else I can do at this moment in time. Wonderful. All right, Callus, your turn. No, Tad, you're on deck. Okay. I am going to cast just a uh, magic missile, all three darts at the la the only one. The only one. Um, there so can only be one. 3d4. Mm. Oh, I think I drank all of them. Oh, I have. Oh, God, I turned off hardware acceleration on this rolling thing. Bear with me. <laughs> Uh, do I need? Uh, so no, it just it, it just hits automatically. Um, that's oh, okay. The of magic. It does. Uh, 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 fourteen damage. 
14. Wow, good rolls, actually. That's, uh, yeah. Mm. So each missile hits, and you see this, like, ripple, or this ripple of arcane, like, explosions just bouncing off his armor, and it's oh, just, it takes him to mm. one knee. It takes him to one knee, and he gets up very slowly. He's pretty banged up already. Have nothing else, so I'm going to stay at the back just in case he comes and tries to shank me. Okay, wonderful. All right, no Ted. I'll get a cat word. You're um... up. Uh, I think I might just stick with. Hang on. That's the, I forgot my glasses, I'm going to move right. <laughs> <to the room. laughs> well, oh, it's 1d12 though, so if I do hit it, it's better, but it doesn't get... Just reading another, I was thinking, sticking with um, Shocking Grass, because that having advantage is really helpful. I was just looking at Witch Bolt, seeing as it's very similar, but it doesn't actually say I get any advantage for them being in a metal armor but it is more damage give him the shocker yeah okay yeah just stick with shocking grass then please all right cool roll with advantage no dad oh. pulls up behind him wets his thumb shoves it right up <laughs> <laughs> doesn't even wet it just <laughs> this is Flips why i have right to up. have advantage uh 17 again 17 hits hey Let's hope for more than one. Oh, it's a one. It's <laughs> a one. So again, you hit it's him square in, the, square in the chest with like your lightning palm of what looks like doom. It looks fantastic. <laughs> as you just send more lightning through their body, but they kind of just they kind of shrug it off. They're still this kind of swaying, but they then steady themselves. Wonderful. It's their turn. Uh oh. And they focus on Mick. Oh, shite. Mick, what's your armor class? 13. 13. Alright. They miss with the first attack. Oh. Hang on. Uh, this music's cool. What's this? Oh, I forgot about music. So he takes oh, no, a. He takes a large swipe at you, but you're nimble enough to just dodge underneath. To dodge underneath the uh, the swipe he makes with his short sword. It's a little desperate given how banged up he is. <laughs> he now turns to Callus. Ah, crap. And f casts Firebolt. Oh, Firebolt. Bolt or ball? Was that sorry? Bolt. Oh, bolt. Oh, thank fuck. I was just about to get sh right. one shot. <laughs> do I? How do I? Do Set I just? Carriage roll, do I just roll? <laughs> just blast damage? me out the door. Yeah, I looked at. Uh, was it Bane? A uh, firebolt's just a spell attack, like just a normal attack. I only know because it's on my other screen. Yeah. So, and what's your? Uh. uh, uh What's your armor class? 15. Oh, that's a nat 20. Oh, oh shit. shit. <laughs> my, first, my first fuck you. Um, <laughs> as DM as well. Yeah. As DM. Fuck. What are the odds? Uh, fuck. That's, that's my this DA. This might sting a little, yeah. I don't want to be is that guy. Just trying to find my detail. Can this kill? No, this can't kill me. Can it kill no, me? It, no, no, it can't kill me. It can do a fuck ton of my HP though. It's a D12. What's my D10? What shape's a D10? It's this one. My camera's shite. Yeah. That's, yeah, that's. A, yeah, zero's. A yeah, ten. yeah, 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 yeah. Zero is it? Yeah. Don't tell him that. I wanted it to be a zero. <laughs> Let's tell you what. Tell you what, tell you what, tell you what. I'll, uh. <coughs> where is it? You die instantly. 
Okay, so... Instagib. Actually, I don't know what level he casts this at. I'm assuming this is a... Oh, no. Oh, no, he could be high level, actually. Bear with me, sorry. Okay. Aren't you glad actually, I killed his friend now? What... Mm. I am, yeah, because I don't know. Yeah, what this level uh, fifth le fifth it, level he gets two D ten. If I could actually roll properly with with two D eight, I could him. probably have killed okay. him. So you know the, the firebolt zings past both uh, Mick and Notad, and it hits you square in the face, <laughs> and it and it deals thirty four points of fire oh damage. God. Oh my god! <laughs> well, I'm down. Thirty four. Jesus. Okay. Uh, yeah, wait, I'm, wait, I'm, wait, I'm, wait, wait, wait. I'm just checking that. I'm assuming he's a higher level caster than I thought he was. <laughs> so. Is M letting the cat in? Okay, so yeah. Are you, like, taken well off your feet? Uh, oh yeah, I'm I'm down. I'm not insta dead, but I'm yeah, uh, you're downed. I, okay. I'm definitely down. <laughs> okay, okay. So... Oh, God, <laughs> wonderful. Um, and it ends its turn. It's uh, after that, it seems it. You can hear almost a derisive chuckle as it sees you slump to the floor. As it sees you like kind of land flat on your back as you get decked yeah, by a fire. I get hit by a shotgun. Okay, so. Mick, it's your turn, and then Notad, you're next. Uh, so does this start the new turn, I take it, then? Start of the new turn. How do okay, opportunity then. attacks work, sorry? If they move. If they leave your range. If they move go to leave your range. So if they're running away, them. basically. Okay. But um, I take it Notad stood right next to this white armoured one. Uh, sort of he behind was behind you, you guys. Yeah. So if if Note had stood right next to the white armored, because he has to touch it, doesn't he? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, so he's him within melee range. So I shall uh, attack with the daggers with a uh, another sneak attack. Wonderful. All right. Uh, uh, and because Note had next to it, I can do the extra damage. Uh, that's twenty-two to hit. Okay, that hits. Roll for damage. Right, so I get an extra. That's... I'm just waiting for Honky to DM for one session and kill me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> literally, literally one session. That's what I've been living for! What are you talking about? <laughs> I've been planning this for years! I had to pay a Tom a fortune for this. <laughs> uh, and that's uh, 12 damage? 12 damage. Nice. How do you want to do this, Mick? Uh, hey. Hey. Very much okay. like his friend. I'm going to run up as I know it works and stab straight between the helmet and the armor. <laughs> You don't stab just the one dagger, I think, this time. You you <laughs> leap at them like Arya Stark fashion and just plunge both daggers into the into the neck. the joint into the neck yeah. of this guard. I feel like I added it, nothing. You, you almost take his head off. <laughs> his head almost his head just like snaps back as ev everything gushes out of him and he falls backwards. And we're out of initiative, so I imagine you're going to uh, go and pick up Callus. Help me! <laughs> yes. Oh, yeah. yeah. Do we have anything for him? I got plus one medicine. Oh god, none yeah. of us are clerics. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'll, I'll, I'll go when this character dies. I'll go and I've try and stabilize him. Dice. <laughs> oh my Does god! Help. <laughs> you uh, you see, you see the guards like bubbling bubbling and they kind of dissolve away like alien. Uh, kind of like alien yeah they just kind of like a mob in a video game of uh, okay but you just see them bubble and dissolve away including their armor including their armor do i need to make death saves <laughs> i Can think I just... uh, now that you're out of combat i think you're okay, okay. i just go over and stabilize him i'm gonna say yeah <laughs> I can't heal you. All I can do is stabilize. I have, yeah, you. I have nothing. So you're back at one HP at the moment. Okay. I I'm just trying to work out how I undead myself from D and D Beyond. I literally oh, okay, have there we go. I give nothing to heal with. Yeah, you can give yourself one HP. 
Okay. Um, <laughs> I can't even take a short rest. Have I got anything that heals? Well, nope. Callus is recuperating <laughs> in the oh, corner. Callus is recuperating. <laughs> you are okay. officially alone with the cargo. Can we uh, go and open, try and prize open and see what's in the cargo? You can. Do not look upon it. In fact, you'll find that the uh, the top of the cargo kind of slides away very easily. Almost too easily, in fact. Uh-oh. So you hear the cl the clunking of wood as you t peel off the top, and as you gaze down it in to the cargo to see what it is, the cargo speaks back. Uh oh. Yeah, 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 yeah. You're not gonna hurt me, are you? Why the fuck are you here? And that's where we'll stop it for a bit as we take a short break, ladies, gentlemen. Tired. So we'll have about 10 minutes break and we'll get back here at about 10 past 9. Woo -woo. Woo -woo. Look at you keeping things on time. Hey, Tom?
And we're back. Welcome back, everybody. Uh, as we we left the gang, I say the gang, the trio, the Arc de Triomphe, if you will. Mange 2. Mange 2, Rodney, Mange 2. And they had just defeated the, uh, the mystical armored guards that fired a lot of bullshit into Callus' face, knocking him down for quite a lot of damage. But they dispatched them nevertheless and have opened up the cargo to hear a meek, a meek little voice saying, huh, are you, uh, 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 you, you're not going to kill me too, are you? Please. I've, ha I've had a pretty bad week. You're all kind of stunned in silence as you certainly slowly hear the screeching of the wheels as the train finally starts slowing to a halt. Oh, shit. What do you want to do? I'm going to try and hoist myself to my feet after getting well and truly yanked. Mm -hmm. uh, see, if I can see what's talking to me, I'll said crate. Yeah, can I ask it yeah. some questions? Okay, so doing? you see, you so you see this, uh, this... He's very, very. He's meek in voice and he's meek in body. He's a middle aged rake of a man. You could almost ignore him if your eyes weren't, like, focusing properly on him. He's just. He's like the human definition of grey. He's got straggly hair. His chest kind of heaving from fear, you know, like a panicked mammal that's been kind of clutched. <gasps> And he's he's just looking up at you guys with eyes wide, like full on rabbit in the headlights. Did you want to ask him a few questions, perhaps? Uh, yeah. Who who are you? What are you doing here? Oh, I I I I'm I'm Derek. Um, I don't really know why I'm why I'm here. I I I might have co committed some. Light treachery for the Boromars. That kind of person. I didn't mean to. I was, I was having a. These guys, they they brought me drink, and nobody's ever bought me drink before. And then I was drinking, and then I was talking, and then I said to, <laughs> and then, then it all went black, and now I'm here. <laughs> It's okay, friend. You're now with friends. <laughs> You're not going to kill me, are you? No, we're going to get you out of here. Oh, thank God. Oh, good. I don't like the box. Can, can you get me out of the box? I don't, I'm very claustrophobic. I'm going to get all these... <laughs> uh, Callus lifts him out of the box, which is... Callus is basically uh, just the Oh wait, sorry, yeah. Mick, Mick, get him out of the box. <laughs> oh. Uh make me a strength check, Mick. Oh good. <laughs> They're all terribly strong. I can't leave lean over the box. I can't even see in the box. <laughs> yeah, you're on tippy toes trying to even peer into the box. <laughs> so that's an at one. Okay. Oh, <laughs> you, 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 you do get Derek out. Derek does come out of the box, but he comes out on top of you and you both fall. And he does that shrill little ah! as he hits the dirt. And you both get up afterwards. Just uh, as a point of. The train is stopping rather rapidly right now, right? The train is coming to a halt. Is quickly. there a door to Can the I... outside on this yeah, train? You have, you have the, look you, have, you have the um, access to the controls of the hatch on okay. the inside of the train, of That's... the carriage. I am going to the hatch. Yeah, let's okay. open it up. Okay. And you hear, like, a, from the back, you hear a, My friend! I have stopped the train! Get out! <laughs> Get out with the cargo! Get out now! Get out! I will open... Well... I attempt to open the side or wherever the hell it is that this hatch opens. Oh, that's it. Perfect. So the hatch comes yeah, so the hatch comes down without a hitch and you uh, escort Derek meek meek Derek out of out of the uh, out of the carriage and off the train and you appear before 
uh, what's called the first tower. There are multiple towers, like kind of landmarks or um, milestones between uh, Shan and Rote. So there's a few towers that kind of um, help help her uh, power the the rail. And you see, you see, there's actually someone there for a change. There's a human. He's got dark hair. It's tied back into a kind of casual ponytail, and he's sporting a beard. And <laughs> strangest of all, he's wearing an apron. Hmm. And he's wait for you, it. You catch the smell. You catch the smell of of meat, Same bacon, meat. eggs, <laughs> bit of sausage, some tomatoes. And you see that oh, he's ho he's holding a battered I, frying pan I know what over is. a griddle made out of a shield. Oh, he's so weird. Good. I'm, I'm not saying it. I'm not saying it. I don't know what this is. Continue, please. And so he sees he see he can't help but notice you guys stumble and fall out of the train with Derek and. Uh, you interact with him. Hello, friend. <laughs> you folks look like you've had a bad time. Can I interest you <laughs> in some fine food? I'm starving. <laughs> You're damn right you can. Well, it is nothing but the honour of the von Kekstack's reputation by which I stand here to offer fine food to hungry travellers. Wonderful. Please, do you want to... like a yarl, I know. Please help yourself to, to uh, uh, we have uh, many fine uh, cooked meats. Uh, we have uh, the uh, this uh, small uh, cakes which I've made in this pan. I've not come up with a name for them yet, but uh, they are quite delicious if a little sweet. <laughs> have you got any duck à l'orange? Feeling a bit French. Uh, I'm afraid it is. Uh, the responsibility of my order only to provide breakfast foods at any time of the day to hungry travellers. Your order? Bacon back then, please. My name is Manfred von Kekstax, paladin of the order of breakfast. <laughs> I knew it. <laughs> so, I would you like to come back eventually? Would you like to uh, sample Mr. Kekstax von Kekstax's goods? Oh, are we still outside the train? Yeah, should we not be? Yeah, should thinking, we not be fucking off? Whilst eating, because I was very much like. Okay, if you want it, you want to take it on the go. You can take it on the go. Yeah, can he come with us? Cause, like... cause I feel like the guards are just going to come and deck us in a minute, and I am not in a position to be decked. Right yeah, absolutely. It's a vendor stall at the base of the tower, so I think you're out. You're out of sight of the uh, okay. the, uh, the guards Dead. and everything. Absolutely, I'm having breakfast. Oh. Cool. Only half All brown. of the best. Well, uh, let's uh, let's get you some uh, some vitas plated up. Uh, what can I get for you, my? Uh, you look like you have uh, stuck your face into a stove, uh, <laughs> wizardly looking friend. Uh, here, have this. He passes over a. A uh, plate of, of fried uh, sausages and bacon, some toast on there. Please, please tuck yourself in and uh, always remember to start the day with a good breakfast. Or have a good breakfast at any time of the day. They are quite <sighs> delicious. Thank you. And I start rapidly eating it. How much do I owe you for this? Oh, it is, it is not charged. This is part of... Uh, Part of my my oath is to ensure that weary travellers receive nourishment when whenever I am able to do so. You're a good man. Oh, no, thank you. Nod and start eating. Got any sausage? Uh, sausages? Yes, we have we have sausages. Please, please uh, help help yourself to as as much as you need. Thank you. These are. Wonderful. Are they uh, Cumberland? I'm, I'm not uh, familiar with the, 
the name of this place. No, these are uh, sausages made to uh, my family family recipe. They are uh, the von Kekstak's recipe for sausages. They're very good. I'll try some of this cake of the pan you were on about. <laughs> oh, yes, okay. uh, the cake of the pan. Uh, please enjoy uh, a myth. I found that we can just pile them up and uh, here you go. You see uh, um, a stack of cakes of the pan, a, a tower of disky witty boys. <laughs> <laughs> That's perfect. So you've all set into your breakfast and... You know, no Tad and Mick, you enjoy your breakfast. You you get to savor the flavor, but Callus, you actually get to uh, you get to recover one hit die plus four. Mm. Oh my god! What a healing uh, breakfast. Breakfast breakfast is a nutritional cornerstone of any it's the most important meal of any here. any criminal in Shan. Um, okay, so you uh. Is... Cool. Oh, six as well. Six. Oh, where's he going? Where's my beer? Ten health. <laughs> so you're on a healthy eleven. Is that what you're I telling? I am. I am indeed. Half great health, almost. Great news. Okay. However, you hear a second screech. This uh -oh. is the screech of hippogriffs. Three. In fact, you hear three screeches. Is the they come sweeping from above the first tower. Has oh. the music been timed perfectly? Yeah, for this? I was thinking that it's the eagle. <laughs> and it comes, and they come plummeting down. They've spotted you, and a, and on riding these three hippogriffs is a uh, is a kobold and two bugbears. Oh, shit. That doesn't sound good. There's one bugbear that's wearing an eye patch and is battle scarred, a real veteran of a bugbear. The other one, kind of chaotic. It's got like disheveled fur and it's snarling and it's growling. And we've met these before. Yeah, I'm sure. just thinking, have we? Yeah, I'm not sure. And then the kobold starts talking. He said, That's it! The perpetrators! Oh god. Get him! Get him, boys! <laughs> well, looks like breakfast is over. Time for me to pack up and go. And you know what to do? It's time to roll for initiative! What? You just blatantly let people ruin breakfast? <laughs> uh, I'm served the breakfast. It's time for me to leave. Go with the blessing of Manfred von Keckstacks. And as he leaves, he casts we love you, bless Manfred. on all bless. three of you. Hey. Hey. Manfred hey. the man. I don't know what that does. What does bless do for our uh, unaware travellers? So, um, I have, uh, Manfred has, has cast Bless on uh, our three adventurers, which means that whenever they make an attack roll or a saving throw for the next minute, they can add a d4 to the number rolled on the attack roll or the saving throw. Splendid. It Thank you, basically, due to the retreating nature of Breakfast Paladin, this will be effectively a one-shot d4 you can throw in should you need it. All right. Perfect. Alrighty. I've got one of old for initiative now. <laughs> I have not forgotten. Would you like to know? I would love to know. So no turd. Uh, not twenty plus three, so twenty-three. What a boss! I hate wasting that twenties on initiative. <laughs> uh, can I get a Mick? Fourteen. 14 and a callus 20 20 not bad. not bad i obviously was too busy eating breakfast <laughs> okay i mean means what i think about what i'm gonna do okay. okay so yeah no ted take some time while i <laughs> try and roll there's three of them right there's two bugbears and there's one kobold all on griffins 
or some sort of flying oh, yeah. creature. Uh, they uh, they've landed, yes, they've landed and uh, have disembarked. They're not very, uh, they're they're quite <laughs> they're not great on hippogriffs. Were what the like were the hippogriffs? Are they also something that we're gonna have to fight, or are they look? Like, no, no, no. These are uh, these are tamed hippogriffs, only good for mounting. <laughs> uh, <laughs> no, <laughs> no. Stop it. Uh, which, okay. Which why they got their bastardized an anatomy in the first place, I suppose. But here we are. <laughs> Dion got drunk one night. Um. Oh my. Um. What, what's um, one of them's a veteran-looking one though, isn't it? The bugbears. The one looks stronger than the other. Uh, one one definitely looks like a veteran. And there was a kobold as well. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Just kill off the fucking kobold. Fuck that thing. That's yeah. I was gonna First of all, it's a it's a rat and a tattletail, and no one likes those. <laughs> Break his okay. legs. Okay, I think I know what I'm gonna do. A flip. <laughs> um. Throw a sausage in his eye. <laughs> I would like to think that I still have my purpose. I'm gonna cast it. green flame blade on okay. my mace. Okay. Uh, can you tell me what Green Flame Blade does? And to the audience as well, please. Uh, so you brandish the weapon, so my mace, used in the spell's casting, and make a melee attack with it against one creature within... F oh, I should have probably asked how close they are, because they have to be within five feet. Uh, they're coming I can run as well, can't I? Yeah, they're, they're coming to you, so you'll meet them halfway. It's okay. kind of like... Yeah. Um, on a hit, the target suffers the weapon's attack's normal effects, and you can cause green fire to leap from the target to a different creature of your choice that you can see within five feet of that creature. Uh, the uh, second creature uh, takes fire damage. That's cool. Okay. I dig it. Okay, so... This is what. Oh God, I, I should just start using D and D Beyond because it's much kinder to me. But I feel like I want to <laughs> use my dice. Here we go to attack. Who are you attacking? Uh, one of the bugbears. Okay, which one? The one with the eye patch, or the one that looks a little crazy? Eye patch. Okay, cool. It's an eleven. That misses. Oh, for fuck's sake. <laughs> okay. Um, as a bonus attack. Okay. I'm going to use Shadow Blade, which is you weave together threads of shadow to create a sword of solidified gloom in your hands. This magic sword lasts until the spell ends. It counts as a simple melee weapon with which you are proficient. It deals 2d8 psychic dang damage on a hit and has the finesse, light, and throne properties. Uh, in addition, okay. when you use the sword to attack, the target in is in dim light, so it's not really working. Okay. Um, so... So I just get so it's a normal to hit thing, same as what I'd probably just use, another normal hit DC. So another attack roll, yeah? Yeah. Lovely. Okay. Go for it. 15 to hit. 15 hits. So you missed with the mace. You kind of you, you kind of got carried away with it because you put such a wicked spell on it and you were hyped. And as you brought it over your head, you kind of forgot how short your arms actually are. So you kind of just hit it into the dirt and you got mad and used this blade of gloom and you struck... The bugbear for how much damage? Uh, nine damage. Nine damage. <laughs> Not <Okay>. two. <laughs> so that makes it take a step. You know, it recoils as it gets hit by this. It definitely feels it. And it does the whole... Brrrr, like a bugbear would. Okay, so we have Callus up next. Okay. Make your own um, Make your own deck. It, I'm assuming it hasn't been an hour since I cast that magic weapon on Mix Dagger. 
It hasn't been a, a what, sorry? It hasn't been an hour since we started that last mm. call, that has it? No, I don't think so, no. Uh, in that case, uh, Mick, you've still got that plus one on yours. Mm -hmm. um, oh, cool. I am going to cast Scorching Ray. I'm going to cast the first beam at the kobold. Okay. Actually, it, will you permit me to, if it kills it, do the additional two on the others, or what, do I have to do it regardless of whether I know the outcome? I think you would be aiming regardless of the outcome. Okay. Well, then you, in that case, you would fire, you would fire the you would fire the rays simultaneously. Okay. You fire the rays simultaneously, right? That's fine. That, uh, yes. Yeah. Yeah. So That's you fine. wouldn't That's be. Fine. It's it's not a. Okay. So that uh, first one is a uh, uh, fifteen for the kobold. That hits. Uh, so that does. Uh, that is four damage on the kobold. Four damage on the kobold. Lovely. Uh, the second <coughs> one was a 24 to hit. On... 20... Mm. I thought you were crazy. Whichever one, whichever one is next, like left or right of the kobold. Oh, okay, so... Uh, whichever the way one... it goes. So, yes. Um, yes, yeah, so you have the eye patch one in the middle. And you have the crazy guy on the right, like okay. kind of looking uh, to flank. So the eye patch one for that takes one. the twenty-four and it hits. Yeah, um, which is oh, these are trash. Oh no, that one's not so bad. Seven damage. Seven damage. And then the last one is twenty-one to hit. Hits. Um, Roll for damage. Was seven again. Seven. Very good. So. Yeah, perfect. So as you fire out these scorching rays, the the um the kobold gets taken off his feet, and you hear this like yelp of agony and surprise as it's been hit so hard with the scorching ray, and it's looking in a bad shape. It it has to really struggle to get itself back on its feet. Um. And then the bugbears, they kind of, they do another whole wounded Chewbacca, the whole as, getting, <laughs> as they get hit good and proper by this Scorching Ray. Okay. Uh, that is it for me. I'm going to stay far back from them because I am fucked up. Okay. So now, unfortunately, Mick, it is the bugbears' turn. Uh -oh. And they, uh, First one swings at Notad. Uh oh. What's your armor class? Uh, fourteen. Fourteen. It hits. Mm, again. Um, it's hitting with a. At least it's not a natural twenty. True. Both of these, both of these uh, bugbears are wielding morning stars. They mean business. So this one clobbers you in the side for hitting it in the face with the uh, with the blade of gloom for hitting it in the side. It returns the favor with the morning star and deals eleven piercing damage to you. Damn, son. Mm -hmm. Um, and now it's the crazy bugbear's turn, and the crazy bugbear takes a swing at Mick. Oh, the guy that stood there and done nothing. Oh, okay. The guy <laughs> that stood there and done nothing. He's taking a swing at you. He doesn't care. He's crazy. Okay. <laughs> What's your armor class? Thirteen. Thirteen. Okay, it hits. So he's just swinging this, uh, he's kind of swinging it rather indiscriminately. But he manages to connect on you, and he deals 12 piercing damage. Gets you good and proper in the midriff. I, I want to be wailing on you. I know, I know. But it is now a mixed turn. Oh, Mick, fuck off. 
Uh, well, I'm going to sneak attack the kobold because if I'm reading this right, he hasn't done anything yet. Okay. So the kobold's already struggling to get up. Don't matter. Yeah. I'm going to go for it. <laughs> okay, cool. That's fine. That's fine. Go for it. I'm an assassin, man. I'm taking out the weakest fucking link. <laughs> <laughs> Alrighty. So, uh, yeah. Uh, give me an attack roll, please. Uh, that's an at 20, so that's a 24 to hit. <laughs> okay. Nice. Uh, yeah, roll roll some damage. Uh, that's... Um, so that's... Yeah. Uh... Uh, oh god, that's uh, maths, man. Um, uh, that'd be like 22. To... <laughs> Wonderful. So you've actually gone in for a slash this time with the dagger, but the kobold's so small and frail and weak, you actually just take its head clean off. Nice. With that first yeah. swipe. The kobold is out of the picture. There is no kobold 2. The kobold is stone kobold dead. Yeah. Can you re Have you got any other actions? I have got a second attack with <laughs> two weapon fighting. Can I attack a second target with that or not? Uh, let me get back to you. Studio, can they attack a second opponent? Because this is a really good question. Yes! Yes, you can. I've just got word from my... Uh... Okay, then. If that's the case, I'll... Uh... This entire time. Take a stab back at the uh, the eye-patched one. Nah, patchy. Yes. Go for him. Because I'll go for his blind side, so hopefully he can't see me. <laughs> 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 uh, that's... Uh, 14, 15, 15, 17 to hit. It hits! Roll me for some damage! Uh, it won't be anywhere in this because the last lot, but... Uh, that is five damage. Five. So, the dagger, as you make a stab, you kind of hit it in the rib cage, just below its armpit, so it's it's really messed up. Was that five damage, did you say? It was, yes. Lovely. So, the patchy is not looking good. It's... uh. It's slumped a little in its shoulders. Its shoulders are forward. It's bre It's panting. Panting in pain. But we press on. No, Tad. It is your turn. Which one's closest to me? Uh, I would say Patchy is closest to you after it wailed <laughs> on you with the Morning Star. Ah, uh, classic Patchy. Ah, uh, Patchy. It's only hard and easy. <laughs> I would like to... Uh, how are they all relatively still in a formation? Like they're quite close to each other. They're they're fairly close to each other because they both they both kind of went together and wailed on you. I don't think you guys were too far away. Um, how far we? I would say about six to ten feet away. And, Social um, <laughs> they're still sort of in their own quadrant, whereas we're separate. It's not like one of us is in. Between no, you you're not. You're not in between. No, I would say, I would say you're still holding your lines, as it were. Cool. So I would like to cast Burning Hands. Okay. So as I hold my hands with thumbs touching and fingers spread, a thin sheet of flames shoots forth from my outstretched fingertips. Each creature in a fifteen foot cone must make a dexterity saving throw. Lovely. Uh, okay, and what is this? Uh... Saving throw? 12. 12. Okay, so we'll do the one. Let's see if this is okay. the power version of Burning Hands. <laughs> Reset. They both fail. They both Five. fail the saving throw, so uh, roll me some damage, please. Okay, so 3d6. 3d6. Nice. I'm not getting caught by this, right? Uh, ten. Ten. Okay. So, you release your inner fuego upon <laughs> both bugbears. And Patchy is more than a little patchy now. His his fur is 
is peeling off his it's his skin and fur almost seem like it's melting off of him as he makes one last little whoa, whoa, and falls to the ground the crazy one on the other hand kind of likes it you can tell it's been damaged it has it has the same sort of bold patches from where the fire singed away all of his fur and you can see some pretty decent burns over his chest and over across his legs but you but he's he's crazy he just seems to enjoy it is there anything else you'd like to do on this turn uh no thank you i am good no worries callus it's on you we've just got one super crazy bugbear. one crazy bugbear left and he's looking in a pretty pretty bad oh, way yeah. Try. I'll try chromatic orb on him. I'll just try it. Uh, just willing to make it. That is a natural one. So he kind of what the crazy one kind of dips because he's he's kind of like a leering, you know, kind of like a like a boxer who doesn't know what he's doing, and he just kind of. And doesn't mean to, but he just dips it and misses. Shit. Uh, is there anything else from you? Nope. That was a waste of a second level spell. <laughs> <laughs> okay, God. so it's uh, it's now the bugbear's turn. Mick, you're on deck. And I think the crazy bugbear's yeah. It goes, for, it goes for Mick again. Oh, shit. Drop the dice. No. It's okay. It's okay. I got this. And so it, uh, it swings again with the Morning Star. Sixteen. Well, I'm down. Damn. No, 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 no. So it hits. Oh. oh, I thought it was doing 16 then. No, 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 Fuck. no. Fuck. <laughs> okay. Uh, roll. You die. Uh, seven damage. Well, I'm nearly down. <laughs> <laughs> On the plus side, though, it is. That's the end of its turn. It can't. Yeah, it doesn't attack twice. So, what would you like to do? It is your turn, Mick. Um, oh, you're thinking, thinking, sorry. So, oh, yeah, fine. is anyone stood near this thing as well as me, or just is it just me within? Uh, I think it's just you now, because, uh, yeah, the pa Patchy, okay. was, Patchy was closest to Notad. Oh. So it is you, Mano, Abero, as it were. Uh, in that case, I shall just stab at it with my daggers. Okay, cool. Uh, give me an attack roll, please. Uh, let's... 17. That hits. Roll me some damage. Nice. Six. Six. Perfect. Okay, so you find another critical area on this guy's torso, on this bear's torso, and despite its manic behavior, despite it seemingly ignoring pain, it felt that one. It really felt that one. That's because I fucking meant it. <laughs> okay, and do you want to use a second attack on it, I'm yes, assuming? I'm going okay. To. Now I've got the one dagger stuck in. Swing around with the other. Yep. And that is a crap roll. That is a 14 to hit. 14 misses, I'm afraid. You kind of tried to hoik yourself up with the dagger to get into its neck, because it's quite tall, these bugbears. But you just miss and bounce back. You bounce away from the bastard. Uh, is there anything else you'd like to do on your turn? Nope. Okay. No Tad, you're up. I like it being three people. It comes around very snappy. <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing? Um...
Any flames around me? Any flames around you? I guess there would be uh, some leftover flames from the uh, shrubbery. Any shrubbery or grass that was uh, mm. ignited by the previous cone of flame. Fuego. Um, yeah, when you released your inner fuego. Possibly, yes. There's also a bit of breakfast fire left over at the first tower, so... Yeah, I changed my mind anyway. Um, For fuck's sake. No, sorry. It wasn't, it, I looked at it and it wasn't going to work in the way I thought. <laughs> but thanks for the description. I really feel like I know exactly what I'm dealing with. <laughs> I'm going to poison spray whoever is closest to me. Okay, it's it's only the one left. There's only one left. Oh, okay. Sorry, yeah. I forgot about that one. Um, within, are they within 10 feet of me? Yes. So can I get within 10 yes. feet? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, yeah, it, you can move and spray it. Yeah, sure. Cool. So I extend my hand towards said creature and uh, project a puff of noxious gas from my okay. palm that Callus is only too familiar with. Um, <laughs> the creature it must succeed on a constitution saving throw of, of 12. Of 12, okay. It fails. Okay. So what happens now? One D twelve. One D twelve. Which the hell is a twelve? Uh, Callus, you're on deck, by the way. That's the hex I can use. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> sure. Uh, nine. Nine. How do you want nine. to do this? Eight. Ooh. So, wow, I puff some smoke in their face. And I guess it's pretty lackluster because it's not really like a stabbing so, type thing. So, so. The, cra so the crazy bugbear, it, it breathes it in. It breathes in a big mouth. It breathes in a big lung full of this poisonous gas because, you know, uh, mixed daggers definitely did some damage and it's been breathe it's been breathing and wheezing hard so it's been drawing in all this air and now it draws in your poison spray and it it kind of stops and goes <laughs> and keels over and blood starts pouring out from its eyes its nose its mouth and its ears mm -hmm. And a few quick convulsions, and it's dead. Yeah. And we are now out of initiative. Where you realise that one of your group is missing. Where's what? Where's Derek? Uh, make me a perception check. Uh, that is a sixteen. 16. So you kind of hear some footsteps. And. And you, you kind of turn around and you snap to those footsteps and you see. You see Derek, who's been kind of shiftily sneaking away. And he's just turned around because he's heard the like. The clash of steel on steel stop, and all of the noise and all of the the chaos that ensues in a fight. And he's turned around to check. And he's realised that everything's dead, and you guys are still alive. And he sees you. You can't. You hit. You hear him go, ah! <laughs> and he start. He starts picking up into a run. As I'm running away from us. Running away from you. I pull out my bow and shoot a shot in front of him. A warning shot. Yes. Okay. Make me a dexterity check, please. I really want you to nap on this and just pull the shot in. <laughs> Sixteen. Sixteen. So you fire a shot and you fire it nice and high, and it arcs over. And despite how far away he's running, it sees the arrow drop like right in front of him, and he skids to a halt. And he gives out another weak yelp of a... <laughs> and he turns back to you guys, frozen. What'd you do? He's fr he's stopped. 
uh, in, front, in front of him, I'm going to shift, so I become more bestial looking. Nice. Okay. And therefore, I can now run an extra ten feet and chase back after him. I think, yeah, I think you'll catch up to him with that extra ten feet. Just go and yeah. dive onto him. <laughs> like fucking cheater on his ass. Yeah, basically. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. Okay, cool. So, he, yeah. So you've caught up with him, you've stopped him, and you've all... Are you all... Are you following Mick as well? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wonderful. And he's like, just, 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 don't, don't... Don't hit me with those things on your, on your hands. Please, don't, don't. Stay back, stay back. Please. Please. You do that again. And we will knock you out, and we will carry you back if we need to. Yeah. Derek. Don't, you don't! Mm. Do you have to take me back? Well, obviously, I can look more, very more, like, cat-like now. So, I'm just gonna be like, no one escapes me. Okay. <laughs> okay. Why wouldn't okay. we take you back? Because you know what they're going to do to me? You know what they're going to do to someone like me? <laughs> they're going to kill me! What did you do exactly? Uh, I told you, I just, I let some things slip. I let it get ahead of me. And I... <laughs> I, <laughs> I just want to run away. You, 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 I wouldn't... I wouldn't tell anyone about you guys and what you the uh, murder uh, you committed. Mm. Stuff. Uh, make me an intimidation <laughs> check, please, Mick. I was gonna slap him if you didn't. That is a fourteen. Fourteen. So how do you wanna how do you wanna intimidate me? Well, the fact. Oh, that Derek. I'm still a basically looking a lot more sort of. Cat slash panthresque. Stare him down and be like, "I don't trust you. You already let slip. That's why you're in trouble." While grabbing him with a uh, sort of clawed-like hand. <laughs> okay, so as you grab him with the claw, he's like, ah, "Okay, okay, 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 <laughs> okay." Oh, I'll be quiet. I'll stay good. Just, just keep those things away from me. And all of it, out of nowhere, you hear, Ah, oh, my friends, it is good to oh, see you again! Ah, oh, wonderful. And William de Noir <laughs> comes back into focus. And he, you hear, as you turn around to see him, you see he's brought a load of friends. He has, in fact, brought a pack of clawfoot, which are these uh, velociraptor-type beasts. Oh, All wearing saddles. Oh, great. And stirrups. Oh, okay. And so he says, I thought this might be easier than walking home, eh? <laughs> what? Wonderful. Oh, oh, what do you say? You want to, uh, would you, uh, like to take a hide with these, uh, with these, uh, clothes? Oh, wait. Oh, where is the cock? Is he the cargo? Is he the uh, cargo? Okay, we'll put him on my on my uh, glove, eh? Okay? <laughs> Keep a close so, eye on this one. Uh, don't mind me, my friends. I have this, and he pulls out a rope and he snaps it, and it makes you you see you can feel you might not even be looking at Derek, but you know he flinched, and so you quickly, without further ado, he hog ties Derek. And throws him onto the back of his, onto the back of his own claw foot, and he, William hops on, and he says, "Come on, hop on." And I need you all to make an animal handling check, please. Ooh, exciting! <laughs> Can I roll one with my diet and one with D and D Beyond and choose the best one? <laughs> Definitely not. 
Yeah. Where's the fun in that? My dice hate me. <laughs> My dice like me. That's why I'm using these. Ones. Proficiencies where relevant, of course. Yeah. I wish I was. Yeah. <laughs> what have we got? Eleven. Eleven. Average. Four. Oh. Four. <laughs> Mick. <laughs> I got a sixteen. I like this dice. Yeah. <laughs> so. So yeah, Mick, so. Mick kind of does, he jumps onto, it's almost like he's ridden a claw foot before. Mick hops on in one fluid movement onto the saddle, feet in the stirrups, and his claw foot almost kind of like purrs and goes, Rrr. I mean, I am mm. an animal, so, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so he's, he has an affinity and he's at one with animals. Uh, no, Tad is a little sketchy, like it kind of. They're a lot bigger than me. Yeah, uh, Callus helps you up onto the saddle, and I think that might, like, it, the claw fit seems dubious at first, but because you're light and because you're small, it becomes accustomed to you on its back, and it, you know, it seems pretty happy. Uh, Callus seems to have picked the wild one out of the bunch as soon as it, like, like, tries to rear and buck him off for a bit, and then, uh, when William says, all right, we go now, eh? Onward! And as soon as he does, you know, in classic Hollywood fashion, Callus can't really control his claw foot or too much and starts sprinting ahead of the group, like, <laughs> way ahead. And William <laughs> has to catch up and, like, slow slow him down. And and then, okay, so you ride your way back to Sean. And you take a... You take a you're going to get a sky taxi back to the Guild of Ambrosia, where Dion said he'd wait for you. It takes a couple of hours. So it's starting to come into the early morning now, so the sun's just starting to rise up on shore, Sean. And, uh... You... William had gagged Derek before. He had, like, muffled him with a, with a piece of cloth. But Derek suddenly becomes very agitated once you reach the uh, the outskirts of Shard. He's like, mm, mm, mm. Do you want to hear what he has to say? Can I hear him doing that from where I? Where yeah, I you can all hear him. He's <laughs> very he's very vocal. Yeah, I would say there's no there's no I, need for, uh, I, perception or anything. Do you want to hear what he has William to say? I stop William and then I I just go to remove the uh, rag from his mouth if William will let me because I'm intrigued. Okay. He goes, let me, let, let me go, please. Please, you'll never see me again. I could have just been dead during that fight with the dusk. I could have just been dead. And, 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 and I, I, I could pay. I could pay a lot. Please. <laughs> Free me. I'm dubious. First of all, how much? And also, I then turn to William and ask him, Sort of suspiciously, what did you see here? To see if he's kind of kind of gauge his response as to whether or not William's willing to let him go. Uh, make me an insight check. Ah, oh, shit. Do I have? Oh, oh actually. Uh, oh, that's still trash. Uh, thirteen. Thirteen. You can see kind of. The look that William gives you is in a... He kind of goes a... He gives a little shake of his head. He doesn't say anything, but he kind of... Tells you tells you what he would do. Oh, too bad. He says, I mean, 200 I, gold! I, each! I mean... I'm trying to get in with the Boromore clan, so I'm mm -hmm. not interested in letting him go. I feel I'm in with the Boromore clan, because, you know, <laughs> yeah, uh... you're romantic. You're in all right. You're in all right, aren't you? Notad wishes he was in. <laughs> okay, so. We're going to say no? No. Take him to the other. Okay, tell him. <laughs> Someone I'm tell him. For Callus Someone tell him that bad Callus news. Yeah, still sat I'm there just like... staring at him. I'm afraid we're trying to gain favour with the Boromars. It's, it's you, not really in our best interest. You don't understand. They're going to kill me. I have a family. I'm just going to ride up and pull his gag back on. 
Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Gag order. Why yeah. exactly is it that they're going to kill you? You still haven't told us specifically what you did. <laughs> and I very gently removed the... I told thing. you all I know! They, I, I committed some light treachery with the Barabas. I didn't mean to let out the secrets. I did it! I did it! So you squealed. <laughs> What, what secrets is what I'd be asking? In an honor is speaking. What secrets? Mickey may be onto something. Mm. Trouble. I just heard trouble then. I don't know if it's my head. Yeah. Yeah, you do. Oh. All I'm thinking is, uh, if they want you back and you spilled secrets, it must have been something pretty bad. So, if you don't want to tell us, we'll just take you to them. Sounds fair. Just, oh, I'm going to put the gag on him tight. <laughs> it's time to deal. Okay, and so William says, ah, now that is over. We must uh, <laughs> think of a way to uh, sneak the cargo to the Gilded Ambrosia. Why are we sneaking him in? Ah, uh, gods, uh, they ask questions if there is uh, someone hogtied on the back of a closet, you know? Are we not? It's a little... Could, uh, a large wooden box. It's a, it's a <laughs> little... It's a... And per conspicuous, no? What, what if we've got a large wooden box? <laughs> With special delivery Dion written on it. <laughs> Just knock it I... out and make a makeshift gurney. <laughs> Actually, that could work. I am going to summon the Tensor's floating disc and then drop him on that. Make it look like a... Uh, like he's been injured. Alice and Mick, are you still wearing your guard uniforms? Oh, I didn't take we them off. Have had, yeah, we wouldn't have had a chance to take them off, would we? So yeah, okay. so I would so, still be wearing mine. Uh, slightly singed version. Okay, so you might want to... Can you make me a dexterity check? Callus, please. Dexterity check. Yeah, dexterity check first. Oh, that's, that's good. Uh, 21. 21. So you actually managed to beat up most of the ash and the charcoal that you got <laughs> oh from the firebolt. So you're, yeah, and your face, <laughs> you clean yourself up. You're, uh, you do quite all right. And so you're going to need performance or deception checks from both Callus and Mick, please. Because you're portraying <laughs> the role of guards once again, yeah. thespians. Uh, excellent. Performance or what, sorry? Performance deception. or deception, whichever's strongest. Both shit. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> come on. Uh, I hate I, right, that dice is getting banned. I didn't do very well on that one either. Go on, lay it on me. I got a 14. 14. 4. Okay, okay so it's bad. it's kind of a it's kind of a similar <laughs> it's kind of a similar vibe. You get a passing kind of yeah. You 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 can you kind of you kind of squeak by as pretending to be guards. My bestial form would have worn off by now as well. I'd be back to more human. So you okay? So that that would add to it as well. And yeah. so you uh, yeah. I I would think you would uh, pass off walking through Shard. You move the body. You move Derek onto the back of Mick's claw foot, and both Callus and Mick go together, and William mm. William and Notad go elsewhere and will meet you in a different way to get to the Gilded Ambrosia. All right. All right, sounds good. Sounds like a wonderful plan, my friend. <laughs> Let's uh, make it happen, no? Oh, we really? Okay, so about huh, it's gonna about another half an hour. I would say half an hour to forty-five minutes later, you uh, you all arrive at the Gilded Ambrosia. Um, 
without too much of a, a an issue. There were a few weird weird glances, but you kind of shy. You kind of like brandished your fake badge of being a guard. It was like this one, and he. Derek's still fighting, even now at the Guild of Ambrosia. Although it's a lot more tired, it's a lot more fatigued. I'd rather elbow him on the back, shut up. Defeated. <laughs> that would definitely uh, spur him to be a little quieter. <laughs> and you, uh, you make your you make your way back to the the Guild of Ambrosia, where Castar's waiting outside for you. And he says, "Ah." The friends of D have returned. How wonderful. Is it, uh, we've all arrived at the same time, haven't we? Yes. Yeah. May we see D? Let follow us me. See the D. <laughs> follow me. Well, Cast- it's my birthday. Castor <laughs> <Cast-a> actually. <laughs> Castor. Cast- 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 <laughs> Cast- 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 leads you around the back. <laughs> he leads you around the back and down a set of stairs to the wine cellar, Ooh. where, where Dion is waiting for you. And he says, "Ah, uh, my friends, William." Great to see you again. Ah, and you brought Derek. Derek, Derek, Derek. You've been a naughty boy, haven't you? And he's... <laughs> oh, yes. Always such a talker, that one. He was a Boromar engineer for a while, and he decided to defect for whatever purpose. I couldn't possibly tell you why, but he started sharing secrets with the Dask. I bet he offered you a large sum of money, did he not? He did. Yes. Always. I'm not surprised. I heard the Dask paid him a small fortune for the secrets he uh, he gave. Not to worry, though, and he snaps his fingers and two Boromar guards quickly pick up Derek and just whisk him away into the shadows of the wine cellar. If I may, what exactly did he spill? To whom? Oh, Boromar trade secrets. Uh, Nothing you need to worry about, really works for me. But I have to thank you for your uh, a job well done. As you can see, this was uh, of great personal importance for me, and uh, you have as ever my gratitude for a job well done. And uh... All I want in life is your gratitude, G. D. G? <laughs> But of course, <laughs> who doesn't want my gratitude? And uh, I will be in touch. You could... I would just ask yeah. that if you have any similar work in the future, that you would keep us in mind. And also, though, in I would like a little bit more um, just info would be good. As opposed to just turn up on a station and find out <laughs> what happened. Uh, information costs. No uh, time. We cost. And you will be paid your dues. Yeah. Don't worry. When have I ever let you down in that regard? It's true. And so, here you are. You're not allowed. They wouldn't really serve you at the top, but uh, I've arranged for you to have a few drinks from the Gilded Ambrosia down here in the wine cellar. You can sample the finest drinks that Sean has to offer here. And trust me, I suggest the Eau de Dion. It is my favorite cocktail after all. May we take one of the bottles? Yeah, you're 
You'll be drinking it here. It doesn't go anywhere. These carafts, these jugs. They won't uh they won't leave the bar. They won't leave the bar, I'm afraid. But please, please sit at the table where you'll be uh fed and watered for tonight. And uh your rewards will come in due time. And please Ask for anything from the bar. There's a there is a bartender here, and he will order the crafts to craft whatever you desire. But I still recommend the eau de Dion. <laughs> <laughs> and so, despite it being the early morning, there is still plenty of time for festivities and celebration at a job well done. And so, with that. That's the end for tonight. And I'm going to leave you with our resident DM to close everything up. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, a round of applause for his first time DMing and a job well done. Oh. Mr. James Bulgarian Harper. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you. I had a wonderful crowd. <laughs> round of applause. Round of applause yeah. all But we round. did miss the robot puns. Yes. Well, <laughs> the yeah, there's, always, there's always, there's always next, next time. time. So that brings us to the end of tonight's adventure. My thanks once again to our players for joining in, for Mr. Harper for stepping up and DMing this week. Um, and thank you to everyone watching along live on Twitch or catching up on the VOD. Um, special birthday acknowledgements to Mr. Richard McDagger Badger. Happy birthday Thank to you, you, sir. Oh, yeah. And the fact Seems... that I'm not horrendously drunk mis means it's a lockdown birthday. Ah, <laughs> uh, yes. I would be anyway. Someday you soon. We'll I mean, have... I tried hard, but I'm starting to run out of alcohol. <laughs> we'll, get, we'll get the birthdays back on track before too long. Don't you worry. Oh, so, yeah. Oh, yeah. we will be back in two weeks' time on Sunday, the 11th of April, to do this whatever new adventure comes your way until then stay safe wash your hands wear a mask stay inside and we'll see you next time good night bye bye dice roll fans bye. good night dice roll fans <laughs> well that was a bit different wasn't it <laughs> oh, wonderful that was that was fun <laughs>